Hello everyone and welcome to Superman Homepage Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. In this our April 1st, April Fool's Day Superman Homepage Live show, we're going to be covering a range of topics, including April Fool's Day. We're going to be talking about uh, some of the things happening with Superman, the upcoming 2025 film. Uh, I've got a bit of news for UK fans around Superman and Lois. We've got comic book stuff to talk about, merchandise, and so much more. We're also going to turn to you to ask for your questions and comments on any particular Superman topic you would like to discuss. So to let you know how all that works and how you can get involved in tonight's show, I'm going to give you all those details in a second. But before I do yeah. that, let me introduce you to my <laughs> co-host, Mark Lax. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hey, Steve, how you doing? Doing well, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, going by my little script that's in my head that I just know off the top of my head that Michael, uh, yeah. uh, Michael and I usually do, and he goes into how people get involved, but this is what fans can do to get involved. All they have to do is go to supermanhomepage.com slash live to be part of the show. There they'll find a press call now button, uh, where, uh, a call now button that they can press, I should say, or you can scan the QR code on the screen right now if you're watching live via YouTube. Uh, that'll take you to the green room where you'll be able to still listen to the show, be part of the show, hear what's going on, and then we'll be able to bring you in if you want to call and talk to us live on the show tonight. So that's what you can do to become part of the show, to talk to us using your phone or your computer. Don't forget to use an external microphone and make sure you've got a headset or headphones in uh, because there is a bit of delay and that can cause a little few issues. But... Uh, Right now, we're uh, happy to get our live listeners who are watching us on YouTube, JP, My Flock, or My Flack, Butts, and others. Please give us a thumbs up and a like right now, whether on YouTube or on Facebook, um, and make sure you leave a comment as you're going along. We really appreciate our live listeners. We appreciate our sponsors, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, Tina Murray, and C. Ralph Adler. Thank you for your support sponsoring the show. And if you, you'd like to join those fine folks and be part of the show tonight, uh, sorry, and be a sponsor of the show, I should say, then simply go to supermanhomepage.com uh, on Patreon. So patreon.com slash supermanhomepage, or you can click the join button on YouTube. There are different levels of membership with different levels of perks. Sadly, someone's given us a thumbs down watching live. That's not nice. Thumbs down. Maybe they've clicked the wrong button. Ah, oh, they fixed it. It's gone no, up. Oh, no. Up. All good. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, but, and listen, uh, talking about people giving us a thumbs up right now, live while we're on the show, you can uh, participate in the comments there on YouTube and Facebook, and we will be able to see what you're saying. So feel free to ask any questions, post a comment, uh, and we'll be able to react, react to those. But if you'd like your comment or question featured on the screen as we go live to the show tonight, then feel free to press the dollar symbol on YouTube. That will open up a slider on your screen. You decide on the dollar amount you're willing to donate, and we will feature your comment or question live on the screen as we go along on YouTube tonight. So, Mark, it's, uh, as I said, April Fool's Day, April 1st, start mm -hmm. of the new month. Um, did you get tricked out by anybody or anything on the internet today? It's one of those days you've got to be very careful about what you're reading. Yeah, I know. I, you know what? I don't look forward to April 1st most, <laughs> most of the time because it, everyone's, everyone's making I mean, you always have your annual one, and that's fun, you know? But you just don't know now, you know, you're, you're looking at something, you're like, oh my God, and it's like, oh, April Fool's, I'm like, oh my God, it's going to be all day, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, it gets to be too much. I mean, yeah. you know, we have our fun, but it, you know, it gets to be too much after a while. Yeah, it's, uh, it is, it's, it's one of those things that you either love it or hate it. Uh, so here in Australia, I don't know how or where it came about, but uh, April Fool's Day only lasts up until midday. So uh, and if you try to prank something after or someone after midday, you're the fool. So it's 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 kind of like only a half day thing. So it, it's not oh. too much of a a big deal. Uh, you can get away with it in the morning, but then after that, um, yeah, it's kind of all done and dusted. But uh, yeah, I don't think you guys have that in the US, or I don't think other countries do that necessarily. No, no. I mean here we just you know it's all day. People really don't care. They just they <laughs> they just fool you and. Fake outs, and uh, I like the way you do it, though. You have that yeah, you have a half it. a day, and then if anybody does it later, then they're the fool. I like that. 
Yeah, that's it. I like that. Uh, so on the Superman homepage, yeah, we've been doing annual April Fool's Day pranks. Sometimes we do three stories. Sometimes we do two. This year we just did the one. Uh, it was in, in relation to the upcoming Superman movie saying that Jam- James Gunn was going to uh, reportedly uh, have a secret identity reveal in the upcoming <laughs> film, a la what uh, my, Brian Michael Bendis did in the comic books with uh, Superman revealing to the world that he is Clark Kent. Uh, we made out that that was going to happen in the upcoming film. Uh, it, not To our knowledge, that's not happening. Uh, it is just our April Fool's yeah. Day prank. Uh, that was up on the website. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not the case. So you can relax if you got caught out by that one. Uh, it was just an April Fool's Day prank as uh, Mixie. Mr. Mixie's. Little Miss Mixie's pair of like, yes, there he is. So wearing the, uh, it's it's Mixie's birthday on April 1st, April Fool's Day, which makes That's sense, right. being the trickster that he is. Uh, so we'll get to all those in this week in history. But, uh, yeah, so sorry if you got caught out. Not the most groundbreaking or earth-shattering uh, April Fool's Day prank that we've ever done. We've done some doozies in our time. Uh, this week was, this time around was pretty mild, but uh, nevertheless, it's a lot of bit of fun. So hopefully it took it in the spirit that it was, it was intended. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I come to, I, I come to expect, you know, every year, what's Steve going to do this year? What's Steve going to do this year? I, I This I look forward to, you know, because mm-hmm. I know you're going to do something funny and, you know, so I look forward to it. But um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, God, God knows I would, uh, please do not reveal his identity. <laughs> I'm sure he won't. I think the way James Gunn's talking about what he's doing, all that, he's not going to do that. No, but um, yeah. then again, we don't really Who knows? know, but I don't, don't think know. so. I don't, no, think, I don't so. think so either. Um, one of the best April Fool's Day pranks that we've ever pulled at the Superman homepage was the year that I did a great Photoshop job on the Superman statue in Metropolis, Illinois, where I said that a um, tornado, a twister had gone through uh, and knocked off the head of the statue. <laughs> and um, it was pretty believable. Um, little image that I put together there, a photo that uh, I had doctored. And suppo- supposedly the Chamber of Commerce there in Metropolis, Illinois, and the Superman Museum were getting inundated with messages from people concerned <gasps> that the uh, statue had been ruined and it wouldn't be fixed in time and for the celebration. And uh, it's still, I've seen the image still going around to this day, people uh, passing it off as real. So that was probably one of the better ones we've done over time, over the time. Yeah, I do. I remember that. I remember that. I didn't realize it got so as far as that, but I do remember that that was a big one because everyone was like, you know, yeah, freaking out. You know, you can believe that people are going to knock off a statue's head. So, you know, when you do you do that, people are just thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> so that was uh, that's, that's the, probably the extent of our April Fool's uh, messages in tonight's show. So uh, you can be sure that the rest of tonight's show will be on the up and up. Nothing underhanded. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll move nothing, forward. Nothing now. sneaky. Nothing sneaky. No, it, that's it. No. Got it out of the way. Got it off our chest. Let's move on to some legitimate news. And this week, uh, we've found out that the grandsons of Jerry Siegel visited James Gunn at his offices there at Atlanta, uh, where the new Superman movie is being filmed. And they gifted James Gunn with a signed copy of uh, Action Comics number one. It's obviously a reprint. Uh, it's not a uh, original 1938, but still, nevertheless, it is signed by Jerry Siegel. Um, so it's a uh, very nice gift that they have uh, given there to James Gunn and the crew of the upcoming Superman film. Uh, this is uh, Mike and Jim, who are the uh, Mike and Michael and James Larson, who are the uh, sons of Jerry Siegel's daughter uh, Laura, and um, so. That's very nice. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I mean, it also shows they have faith in him. <laughs> I guess you know for for doing that. I mean, I mean, it's you know, it's obviously not an official number one, but it is still it is signed by uh, Jerry Siegel. So right there, it just you know that's something that's something too you want to put in the vault. You know, 100%. we're talking about how how we couldn't keep you know buying you know for few million dollars action comics number one we wouldn't we wouldn't put that in the living room you know we put it in the vault well 
Jerry Siegel signed it to me, that would go on the vault. Yeah, indeed. So this photo was taken in late February when uh, the cast of the new film were together doing a table read there at Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, the Michael and James visited uh, the officers there and passed on that gift. So that's very nice to see that, as you said, they have the trust uh, in what's coming. And um, maybe they'll try to get an inside scoop themselves to see what's going on with this new film. But uh, nevertheless, hey, very nice. There you have it. Yeah, I mean, you know. Very cool news. All right, so uh, that's all we have on Superman, the upcoming film, 2025. We know July 11th, 2025 is the release date for that movie, and we'll keep you posted with any other details that do come to hand that are, as I said, legitimate. All right, uh, if you're a fan of Superman, the movie, and you live in uh, Idaho, uh, I think it's pronounced Boise. Boise, Idaho. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Boise, Idaho. They are having a special screening of Superman the movie uh, there this week. Um, actually, it's actually no, it was already. Sorry, it was last. It was on Friday. So you, if you went, I hope you no. enjoyed it. Yes, <laughs> uh, it was uh, on March 29th. So it was news for this week. But uh, if you were there and you were April Fools, April Fools. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, putting it all together, all the news that was there for this week and didn't realize that this one had already screened. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and got out to the Egyptian theater there in Boise, Idaho. Uh, if you live in that area and enjoyed seeing Superman the movie on the big screen. Uh, Piper Cody in the comments saying that uh, it would be nice if the Siegel grandsons were uh, used as cameos in the movie you never know that might be possible not that anybody would necessarily know who they were so it's not like most mm -hmm. cameos where you see someone like um talking of superman the movie we saw kirk allen and noel neal as the parents of uh, lois lane on the train um so that was a nice cameo uh we've seen obviously uh, noel neal and jack larson in superman returns as cameo mm -hmm. appearances and uh, there have been many over the years so Cameos are usually kind of for those people that you would recognize as being someone from the world of Superman. Um, but yeah, if they wanted to be extras or something like that, they could say that they were in the film. That might be nice, but not that anybody would necessarily know who they were. No, but you know, for them, if you know, they, 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 like you said, put them in a crowd scene or something for them, yeah. that would be something to us. We have no idea who, who they are, you know, as far as what they look like and all that. So it wouldn't mean anything, but no, might mean something to them. Exactly, and to the family. So that would be a nice touch. Now, this one is for fans in the UK. We move on to the TV side of the world of Superman. And while I haven't posted anything on the website as yet, I'm waiting for an exact date. I'm happy to report for UK fans who have been waiting very patiently that uh, Superman and Lois Season 3, while we're waiting for Season 4, Fans in the UK are still waiting for season three, and it will air this month on BBC One. Uh, I don't know an exact date in April. I'm still waiting for that. It's not in the first two weeks. It'll be in the second half of April. And uh, Once I know a date, I will put it up on the website. But season three of Superman and Lois for UK fans will be coming this month, April, on BBC One. So keep an eye out on our website for an announcement for the exact date yeah i you know i don't know how these things work i don't understand you know the rights and all of that but i mean we're talking about the uk you would think they would get the show uh, like at the same time we would I, I mean they get other shows you know i mean i, I don't know i guess it comes down so to popularity you know maybe <sighs> superman and lois isn't as in demand there i mean here in australia we pretty much get it the same week uh, as right. um the us um but yeah i don't know what the issue there is with superman and lois in the uk as far as why the bbc are so slow in bringing the seasons to television there for their fans because in this day and age where the internet allows you to your viewing in other nefarious ways that you know people will download them or what have you why would you chance 
having low ratings once you do actually pay for it and screen it if those diehard fans who are waiting for it may not have waited because they just didn't want to be so far behind. Right. Yeah. Doesn't because, and, and, you know, you know, you know, a lot of people in the UK have seen it <laughs> and, you know, not the way they should. And then they're not going to watch it when it's on. And then, you know, it, they, they just, you know, kind of shooting themselves in the foot by doing that. But Exactly. It's a vicious circle. So, uh, not sure why, but the situation is that way in the UK. But nevertheless, if fans are still waiting, or maybe they want to see it again um, on TV, then uh, later in April, Season 3 will be airing there on BBC One. We'll keep you posted, as I said. All right, well, let's jump into some of our regular segments. And we're going to get into the This Week in History segment as I bumble my way through once more. Come with me now, my son, as we break through the bars of your earthly confinement, traveling through time and space. All right, so here we go with this week in history as I bring up my notes and bring up some of the imagery. Uh, let's see if I can manage to get this done without too many issues. All right, so we're going to start with uh, going, it's, it's, it's a weird one this week because we don't have anything in 1944. Nothing in 1954, so we're jumping right up to 1964, where April 2nd, 1964, saw the release of Superboy number 113. And in this issue, we had two stories, Dad Kent's Boyhood and the Superboy of 800 Years Ago, which is there on the cover. Yeah, what's that? He's looking through a, through a door. Mm. He's looking through a door. Yeah, using his X-ray vision, yeah, so, um, all time travel issue it says in here, and uh, this yeah. got the, a great cover by Kurt Swan and George Klein. Yeah, that is a good cover. That was Superboy number one hundred and thirteen in nineteen sixty four. We jump straight to another uh, to nineteen seventy four, where April second, nineteen seventy four, saw the release of Justice League of America number one hundred and twelve, and we saw War with the One Man Justice League. On the cover there, uh, there are also some backup stories. Um, and another Justice League story was the Super Exiles of Earth. This is another one of those 100-page giants for only 60 cents back in the day. Wow. <laughs> and Nick Cardi cover there. They haven't gone up too much since then. <laughs> yeah, not right. <laughs> okay, so that was 1974. Then we jump to April 1st, 1984, with where we saw the Superpowers Collection, Superman number one. And I'm guessing these were a, um, like, uh, an item that came out with action figures, the Superpowers Collection series of action figures, or wave of action figures. This was the Superman issue. There was also a Batman and a Wonder Woman that same week. Yeah, I do. That, uh, that I do remember. Mm -hmm. and probably had at the time. Right, there you go. So that was uh, 1984. Also that same week in 1984, we saw the release of Best of DC number 50, uh, which was obviously a collection of stories. Uh, there was the uh, Superman OMAC, The Once and Future War, The Kid Who Played Superman, Luthor Unleashed, and then a uh, Superman Legion of Substitute Heroes story, Ambush Bug 2. That's an interesting yeah that, on the cover there. yeah i didn't I, I didn't remember yeah i don't i don't remember that. i remember i i know i read some of the stories that are in there but i don't remember that mm, so that's an interesting best of dc is that, is that that's not a digest was that no it's uh right? it must no. be it must have been some kind of digest i guess it's just kind of like a collection of, oh. of stories the best of dc so the year's best superman stories obviously maybe reprints i guess um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Kurt Schaffenberger cover there. Um, <clears throat> also, 1984 saw the release on April 5th of DC Comics Presents number 71, Superman and Bizarro uh, on the cover there, um, an Ed Burrito cover. Pencils by Kurt. Yeah, that was Stone a fun issue. Side. Oh, you remember this one? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. That was fun. So that's uh, 1984. Um, 
Also 1984, Superpowers Collection Brainiac number five. So this is another one of those uh, action figure, I guess, uh, collections that came out in 1984 to tie in with the Superpowers action figures. There's a Brainiac flavored one there. And then we jump through to 1994 where April 5th, 1994 saw Action Comics 699 released. This was written by Roger Stern. And uh, the story inside was Eye of the Hurricane. This means war on the cover there. <laughs> Great Jackson guy. Yeah, that was. Cover with the yes. uh, very uh, heavy headed hair Superman. Mm hmm. The longer haired mm -hmm. Superman. That was Action Comics in 1994. Then we jump through to 2004, where Avengers JLA number four, I think I mentioned a couple of these last week. This was included last week erroneously. It should have been yeah. this week's because uh, that was uh, it's in part of this week's releases. Um, so JLA, Avengers JLA number four, as we said, very iconic cover. Also, I mentioned this one last week, JLA number 95. Uh, put it in too early. And... Again, Legion or uh, number 31 uh, was also one I mentioned last week, as was Superman number 203, which, as I said, I mentioned last week, which should have been left for this week. So those are the books that came out this week. This one, obviously, by Joe Kelly with art by Michael Turner. And then we jump through to 2014, where Action Comics number 30 was released on April 2nd, 2014. Unbound was the internal story title. Uh, this one uh, was written by Greg Pack with Aaron Kuda doing the internal pencils and the cover. Yeah, I remember the doomed, uh, the doomed storyline. You know, uh, Kuda and Pack at the time were actually doing a pretty good job in, in action comics. That some of those stories were, you know, some of the better stories. But then, of course, it came out, you know, later on when they did that truth story arc. That was actually Greg Pack's. Uh, he was at the architect, I think, of that. Mm. So, you take the good with the bad, here, I guess. Yeah, the cover here, the S, looks very reminiscent of what we're about to see in the upcoming movie. It, yeah, it does. Very and I don't age. remember at the time why it, you know. Could have just been the artist, but uh, yeah, very interesting. Just noticed that myself. Yeah. Uh, also, that same week in uh, 2014, we saw the release of Earth 2, number 22. Uh, where uh, I don't know how involved Superman was in his story, but uh, T Tom Taylor and Nicholas Scott, uh, two Aussies there doing the, uh, <laughs> the work on this one. And uh, also yeah. that same week, Trinity of Sin, The Phantom Stranger, number 18, I mentioned because there's obviously Superman on the cover there. This one called The Ghosts of Metropolis, uh, which is uh, kind of... Very interesting because we're about to have a Ghosts of Krypton um, series come up with action figures that are tying in. I've mentioned a couple of weeks yes. recently. So, yeah, very ghostly image there with the Phantom Stranger, obviously, in the background. And uh, this one was by GM J.M. DeMatisse. So, uh, mentioned that one. Then we go to the <laughs> real world. Uh, we're in the real world of Superman. We have this week, we are commemorating, just get my calendar nice and handy, uh, on uh, March 31st, Sunday, March 31st. So we, don't, we start from Sundays. Action Comics number 252 introduced us to Kara zor Superman's cousin Supergirl. That was back in March 31st, 1959, which makes it an anniversary of... Um, that, uh, oh, wait, wait, so what, it was, what, it was 50... 59. 59. Okay, so 20, years? so uh, six, 65 years? 65 years. Yeah, six, my math is yeah 65 years. So 65 years. So 65 years. Now, mine is... Supergirl. <laughs> so congratulations to all those involved. Of course, you just stuck around for all that time. Uh, also, uh, celebrating his birthday this week is Mark McClure, best known for playing Jimmy Olsen in the Christopher Reeve Superman films, as well as the Supergirl film. Uh, the only uh, cast member to be 
across all four or five films, I should say. Um, mm. So uh, happy birthday to Mark McClure. Obviously, he's very well known for playing uh, Marty McFly's brother in the uh, Back to the Future films as well. Um, so uh, he's across a number of different uh, popular yeah, two. Uh, two huge franchi- franchises. franchises yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, he oh, was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that, Mark. He was born yeah. in, uh, just bringing up, he was born in, where is it? Mark McCaw, born in 1957. So happy birthday to Mark. Also celebrating a birthday this very day, Annette O'Toole, who obviously we know played Lana Lang in the uh, Superman 3 film, uh, but then was also Martha Kent in the TV series Smallville. Uh, She was born on April 1st, 1954 in Houston, Texas. So happy birthday to Annette O'Toole. Sam Huntington, also born on April 1st, uh, and he was Jimmy Olsen in Superman Returns. So uh, happy birthday to him. And as I mentioned earlier, April 1st is also (laughs) the birthday, uh, traditionally celebrated, the birthday of Mr. Mixius Pitalik, the imp from the fifth dimension. No surprise. I guess it's kind of fitting that he is commemorated on April 1st. So uh, Mixie's birthday. Also this week, uh, Marlon Brando, the late great Marlon Brando, uh, who played Jor-El in Superman the movie and also in the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2, was born in 1924 in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, and the late great Marlon Brando. And Cameron Cuff, who uh, played uh, Segel, in the short-lived two-season uh, series Krypton. He was born in London, England in 1993 on April 5th. So happy birthday to Cameron Cuff for this coming week. So that is This Week in History. I've managed to stumble through it. I hope you enjoy <laughs> looking back at the decades no, and the birthdays that we celebrate this week. Very, Very good job. I, I didn't realize that um, uh, Marlon Brando would have been 100 years old. Yeah. 100th birthday for Marlon Brando. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So uh, there you have it. All right. We're going to take a quick break, play some messages, come back on the flip side to do the fan favorite segment of our show. And we're also going to do the comic book side of the world of Superman. We've got some a new magazine to talk about. So stick with us. We'll be back after these messages with the rest of tonight's program. And don't forget, if you do want to get in on tonight's program and have a chat with us live tonight, feel free to go to supermanhomepage.com slash live and press the call now button. We'll be back right after these messages. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. If you're enjoying Superman Homepage Live, then please like and share this video with your family and friends. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you can click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we post a new video. You can also join our YouTube membership program, just click the join button below. Or you can become a patron and support our website by going to patreon.com slash Superman Homepage. Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. Supermanhomepage.com, covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. Supermanhomepage.com, for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Man of Steel and more. SupermanHomePage.com Thanks, Superman Homepage, for all the support over the years. I really appreciate it. I'm Matt Ballmer. I'm the voice of Superman and Superman Unbound, and this is the Superman Homepage. Right here on Superman Homepage. 
Hi, Steven. This is Lois Lane from The Daily Planet. Do you want to start a video podcast but don't know where to start? Or maybe you've been podcasting for a while, but you're bored with the traditional audio-only format. Either way, I've got just a thing. Ecamm Live is the number one choice for busy podcasters who want to easily create professional-looking video podcasts. But why? They're more engaging for your audience, and video keeps their attention, so they're more likely to stick around and become part of your community. Let me show you just how easy it is with Ecamm Live. You can drag and drop graphics right onto your show to make it more professional. And if you have a co-host or guests, bringing them onto your show is a breeze. You can even tweak the look of your guest video no matter where they are. And you can set up your scenes in advance so when your show starts, you can play your intro and easily switch between your scenes during the show. So it really simplifies your workflow and eliminates the need for a bunch of editing. Plus, your isolated audio tracks are saved right onto your computer along with your high-quality video files. So there's no more waiting for a link to download your files. They're right there. And once you're done, you can upload it to your syndication platform. It's time to give your audience what they really want. So if you're ready to become a visual authority and take your podcast to the next level with video, join the Ecamm fam. Thousands of podcasters have already made the switch. We just waiting on you. Just go to supermanhomepage.com slash Ecamm. the price you pay. You sign a lot of autographs? Oh, yeah. You? Some. They ask me to bend stuff a lot. I can see that. What? It's Lois. She's in trouble. Did you look through that building? Well, kind of. It's glass. Watch it. Whoa. Idiot. Lois! Superman. I've forgotten my wallet. I can't carry money in this. I'm powerless. I'm not. What's with the spin? He idolizes me. It's embarrassing. My hero. What's that? It's a huge comet hurtling perilously towards Earth. We're doomed! I think you better get this one. You can do more with the American Express card. Wait, could you? It's for my kid. Speaking of cameo appearances, Jack Larson appearing in that Seinfeld yes. American Express TV commercial, looking up when the comet is announced. So there you have it. All right, uh, let's get into the fan favorite segment of our show. Here we go. All right, so Mark, what was our fan favorite question from last week? Our question last week was, what is your favorite Triangle Era comic book cover? And JP Roca wrote, my favorite Superman Triangle Era cover is Dan Jurgens and Brett Breeding, Superman 76, 1993, Triangle Number 6, Funeral for a Friend, Part 4, Metropolis, Mailbag 2. Wow, it's a mouthful, but uh, yeah, it's a great uh, yeah. Dan Jurgens and Brett Breeding <laughs> cover from Superman number 76, uh, number six triangle from 1993. Thank you to JP for that one. Very cool. Next up, we have uh, Lorenzo Valdez who wrote in saying, I was born in 1998, so I missed out on the triangle era as it was being originally published. Last year, however, I was at a con at which I won a free comic of my choice out of a bunch of back issue boxes. As soon as I came across this particular issue, Action Comics number 764, from the tail end of the trial anger, trial, Triangle Era, I knew just from the cover that this comic was the one I had to take home with me. Smallville, the show, is my favourite incarnation of the Man of Steel, and as a result I tend to be especially drawn to any Superman content that spotlights the town of Smallville, so this cover instantly appealed to me immensely. I remember going and sitting by the swimming pool at my com condominium complex after the convention to joyfully read this exciting issue. I now submit this as my favorite Triangle Era cover. Since I'm emailing you anyway, I again was unsure whether... Oh, he's just putting in this super secret soundbite entry, which I have taken note of. So thank you to Lorenzo. Very good. That's a very nice cover. Yes, very much towards the end of the Triangle Era, number 17 from the year 2000. Yes. All right, who's next? Oh, I'm next. Uh, Brian Ignatius Pratt wrote, 
I would say that my favorite Triangle Era cover would be the amazing and beautiful cover of Adventures of Superman 525 by the great duo of, of Stuart Immanent and Jose Marzan Jr. How can any Superman fan that ships Soups and Lo Lois not love this cover? The text at the top perfectly encapsulates the message of the striking image below, Lois and Clark forever. Yeah, very nice cover. Yes. Definitely, uh, you can try to tell Stuart Amona's uh, pencils. So, uh, yes, 1995, oh, yeah. triangle number 25. Thank you, Ryan, for sending that one in. Great memories. All right, the final entry we had was from Elliot Quadrado, who wrote in saying, my favorite cover from the Triangle era would have to go to Action Comics number 700. I remember this issue really catching my attention when I was young, and it showed how Superman is always the guy with the weight of the world on his shoulders. Lois and Jimmy being the, uh, the prominent characters while running for their lives as Clark tries to hold back the destruction of Metropolis is one hell of a classic visual. Very nice. Yes, that's a great uh, cover. The Fall of Metropolis era, uh, number 24 from 1994, uh, but issues number 700 of Action Comics. So very cool. That's uh, yes. very nice. Thank you very much to Elliot, to Ryan, to JP and Lorenzo for their entries uh, to this fan favorite question for this week. So thank you for those. And Mark, what is our new fan favorite question for this week? Our new fan favorite question is, what is your favorite Mr. Mixes Pindelic comic book cover? Yeah, with today being Mixie's birthday, it's a great way to uh, commemorate some of the best and better covers for uh, Mr. Mixie's Pindelic. So get involved in the fan favorite segment of our show. Send your emails to info at supermanhomepage.com. That's info at supermanhomepage.com. Let us know what your favor, favorite favorite. Mr. Mixie's Pitalik comic book cover is, and we will feature them when we return to this segment next week. So get involved in the fan favorite segment of our show. All right, so we've got that out of the way. Let's move on now to the comic book side of the world of Superman. And here are the comic books that you can enjoy this week. And there are a couple of good ones out there. This is what you've got to look forward to if you are a comic book reader. We have Neil Before Zod, number four, that is available in a couple of different variant covers right there. We also have Superman 78, The Metal Curtain, number six. I believe this is the final issue of this story. Yes. Uh, and that is available in a couple of cool different variant covers there. And also out this week in... Trade paperback form is JLA Book 1 uh, with the Electric Blue Superman on the cover there. And also out this week is Superman Lois and Clark Doom Rising trade paperback uh, from that era of when they were telling stories about the original Superman uh, that uh, him, with him and Lois living secretly for a while there uh, while they brought up their son John. So that's the books coming out this week. Uh, Superman 78, the metal curtain number six being the big one, which you reviewed for the site, Mark, and that review will be up on the website tomorrow. Yes, very satisfying ending for people who, who enjoyed the book. They'll, they'll really enjoy it. Excellent. So that's what we have to look forward to this week in the world of Superman comic books. So let's have a look elsewhere and talking about publications that you might enjoy. Uh, there is a new book, uh, a magazine that is on newsstands now in the US. I haven't seen it anywhere here in Australia as of yet. Uh, they don't always get released here. But uh, A360 Media has published a new magazine titled Superman Big Book of Trivia. It's a 96-page collector's special, which includes obviously super, uh, Superman trivia from across his entire history. Uh, a great cover there. You've got Christopher Reeve featured twice for some reason. Uh, and you've got uh, Brandon <laughs> Routh. You've got Henry Cavill. You've got George Reeves. And a couple of the comic book and animated versions of Superman, which make up the green screen behind me tonight. Uh, so this is a price at uh, $13.99 US and is available to get at local newsstands and other places around the US. But if you want to, you can also order it for online from magazine shop 
Uh, have you managed to find this one near you, Mark? I actually, I was gonna, I was gonna go on Amazon to see if they had a, if they didn't have a digital version, then I'm definitely gonna, I gotta order, uh, order the, order the uh, hard Physical copy. copy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I don't think it's available on Amazon. Um, and dif- I don't think there is a digital version available, so you might have to yeah. scout around for a physical copy mm-hmm. or buy it online from a magazine shop. But uh, yeah, interesting publication. I'm not sure. I haven't seen. Uh, I've got some other. Uh, pages that I can share with you from internally. Uh, so there's the contents. It's got why we love Superman, the comics, the origin story, the villains, the movie serial, uh, also the 1950s TV show, the Christopher Reeve era, the Brandon Routh era, the Henry Cavill era, the cartoons, and then uh, there's the uh, opening uh, introduction, why we love Superman, and uh, a couple of great images and tributes to obviously Christopher Reeve there. So bit of trivia there for fans of the different eras and different versions of Superman. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to have a look to see what kind of information they have in there and whether or not it's uh, all 100% accurate. We'll see. Yeah. We would know. <laughs> so uh, that's the big book of trivia available on newsstands now in the US, or as I said, you can purchase it online from Magazine Shop. All right, uh, if you're a gamer, uh, then DC Universe Online, the massive multimedia player um, online game, is available on PlayStation 5. It's uh, So it's an MMO role-playing game, and this was a launch trailer that they released for the PS5. Check it out, if I can find it. So there you have it. That was just a very quick PS5 launch trailer for DC Universe Online, now available on PS5. Uh, DC Universe Online combines immersive environments and fascinating story arcs with fast-paced physics-based combat, allowing players to pick up buses and other objects in the environment, fly into the air and throw them at enemies, run up the sides of buildings to engage in melee brawls while shooting flames of fire from their hands, or cling to the side of buildings while using a grappling hook to pull flying opponents out of the sky all while fighting alongside or against the legendary characters of DC Comics and charting their own their own path to legendary. So uh, there you have it, dcuniverseonline.com. If you're unfamiliar with this game or want further details, uh, it's, uh, it's been around for a while, but uh, the PS5 version now available. So uh, I'm impressed that the game has hung around this long. Yeah, I mean... I- I'm I'm not into video games, so I I've never played any of these games, but uh, yeah, <laughs> no, fair enough. And uh, looking at uh, our live listeners, we've got uh, quite a few watching right now as we go live to air. Uh, please give us a thumbs up or a like right now. It's a great way to uh, ensure that we are able to get to a larger audience. So feel free to please leave a comment or give us a thumbs up right now as you're watching the show. I uh, hope you enjoy that. And for those who are listening after the fact on our podcast version, the audio version of the show, if any of the visuals that we're talking about or playing here uh, pique your interest, then feel free to go to YouTube uh, and watch the video there if you're interested in seeing some of the visuals while our audio version on our, you know, on Spotify and Apple Music is just audio only. Uh, any of the visuals you want to check out are available on our YouTube channel. Uh, so make sure you check that out, or just go to supermanhomepage.com to check out the latest episode video. All right, so that's uh, the video game side of things. Now, in the world of Superman, as far as conventions go, there are a couple of conventions coming up next weekend that fans might want to check out and attend because there are a number of Superman celebrities uh, making their way to conventions this coming weekend. Sam Witwer who, uh, as you all know, was Doomsday Davis Bloom on the Smallville TV series and was also uh, on the Supergirl TV series. Uh, He will be at Spookala, Spookala, Tampa Bay, Florida, 
uh, which is on from April 5th to April 7th. He'll be there for all three days. And then uh, fans in South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, will be the location for SC Comic Con. Uh, Jim Shooter will be there, as will uh, Jay Lee and Robert Venditti. They will all be there for both days of the convention, April 6th and April 7th. Well, Jim Lee will only be there on Saturday only. So uh, it's 10 years of SC Comic Con. So uh, you might want to check that out in Greenville, South Carolina. Those are the Superman celebrities and comic book people attending those conventions next weekend. What's the uh, local convention? Anywhere one close to you, Mark, that uh, you would be partial to going to? Well, um, you, in the summer, we have Terrificon. Okay. Um, here, in, here in Connecticut, it's in, uh, I guess it's Uncasville. It's in, it's in where the casino is. It has the big uh, convention center there. Nice. Um, and I went once several years ago, but um, I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared. I didn't, wasn't prepared with how much money was there, everything was going to be. So if, I can go this year. I'll, I might. I might try to go this year. Yeah, very cool. Definitely. They, they, worth they, it's while. been. Yeah, they've had it um, se- several years now. It's becoming. You know, it's becoming uh, fairly big. Yeah, we've got uh, two one two conventions here in Sydney, which are the big ones: uh, Oz Comic Con and Supernova, which I try to get to whenever I can, especially if there's a Superman celebrity or comic book people attending. So uh, definitely worth going to conventions. Uh, and just to meet other Superman fans. Uh, and uh, I have started doing panels. I did a panel this past year uh, for Superman's 85th anniversary, so that was cool, not just to be wandering around the floor, but to actually get out there and present as well. Uh, it's definitely something that I enjoy doing. All right, uh, from the Superman homepage side of things, uh, the new month brings a new Super Trivia quiz. So uh, if you're keen and th- want to try your hand, at answering this month's Super Trivia Quiz questions. Whoops, sorry, turn off the convention announcements there. The Super Trivia Quiz has been updated for the beginning of the new month, and the three questions we're asking you this time around are, which Superman villain traditionally celebrates his birthday on April 1st? I think we've given these away already. Mm -hmm. Which actor who has appeared in both a Superman movie and on the TV series Smallville celebrates her birthday on April 1st? And which Jimmy Olsen actor celebrates his birthday on April 1st. So uh, if you've been listening and paying attention to tonight's show, these questions mm-hmm. shouldn't be too hard for you. Uh, just head to supermanhomepage.com slash trivia, so, uh, and you'll be able to send your entry in, and each person who guesses those three questions right will have their name in the uh, never-ending battlers list on the Super Trivia Quiz uh, when we renew it for the following month. So get involved in the Super trivia quiz at supermanhomepage.com all right uh just looking around we, we've kind of uh it's been a very quiet week in the uh world of superman we're obviously still waiting yes. on upcoming news for uh the new movie coming out in 2025 we're still waiting news on uh season four of superman and lois which we know will be around september october this year with 10 episodes making up the complete season of this fourth and final season. Still no word on a premiere date for season two of My Adventures with Superman, the animated series on um, Adult Swim. So we're waiting word for that. Obviously, we do know that there is a comic book coming out that will bridge the gap between season one and season two of My Adventures with Superman. So uh, something we're looking forward to there. Uh, on the comic book side of things, obviously the, the comic books are still powering along. Um, you've got your review, Superman 78, The Metal Curtain, number six, coming out tomorrow. Uh, we've also got the Neil Pavor Zod uh, review from JP coming out tomorrow. Uh, but uh, looking ahead for the rest of the month from the Superman side of things, um, I guess the one that I'm kind of interested to look at is not coming towards the end of the month, but Superman House of Brainiac special number one comes out the last week of April. And I guess that kind of leads us into the next phase of where the Superman comic books will be headed. Yes. That I'm really looking forward to. It's been a while since Uh, we've seen Brainiac in the comics. Yeah. 
in the main in the main uh, in the main comments. Yeah, it has been a long time, and maybe this will answer a few questions as to why. Yeah, what's he been and doing? What's ahead? Been, you know, what's ahead? So, uh, and mm. for fans asking about Michael Bailey, uh, when he might be uh, returning uh, to the Superman homepage live uh, screen with us. Uh, no words yet from Michael as to when he'll be settled into his new place. Things are taking a little bit longer than he originally planned. Uh, he was moving location, moving house, uh, and a uh, new job and all that kind of stuff. So we wish him well. And I know Michael's uh, busy doing his own things as well. And he's been posting a daily uh, Superman uh, social media post across all these different platforms uh, lately. So uh, he's still very much in the world of Superman. Uh, we eagerly await his return. But uh, obviously, Mark, you're always uh, welcome as a uh, as a, uh, a friend of the of the show, and I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, co-hosting with you over these last what's well, feel feel like a couple of months now since Mark yeah, and has stepped been. aside. So um, some ideas coming up that uh, Mark and I will uh, I'm going to be pitching to Mark to getting more involved in the site. So uh, you'll uh, mm-hmm. we'll have to discuss those off air to to see whether or not. Uh, we can uh, continue to have Mark contributing to the show once um, Michael uh, does return. But uh, Mark's always heavily involved on the comic book review side of things, doing quite a few reviews for us uh, of late. Um, Superman seventy eight is that it? The final issue, number six. That's it. This is uh, this is the very last issue. Now, hopefully, we'll get another you know series, another yes. volume three or something. But um... This is the yeah. This is the last issue of this mini series, cool. and it's you know it's it's um, it's very good. It's it, you know it it had a, it like I said it had a satisfying ending, and as I was thinking, there was a recent uh, mini series that I had uh, that I had reviewed that didn't have such a great that, that wasn't such a great ending wasn't such a great book Superman Lost. I was just thinking how, you know, I'm re- reading this and how, how fun it is and how much I'm really enjoying it. And then I'm thinking back to that 12 issue, no, 10, excuse me, 10 issue miniseries that just went around and around. And it, it, had, it had its good points. It had, you know, a lot of bad points to it. I just, some, sometime I'll, I'll try to talk about it or write about it more, but, you know, or you can read my reviews. But, um, yeah, just was not one of my favorites. A lot of nice comments coming in on, uh, on YouTube. People saying, don't leave Mark and ho- uh, hope Mark sticks <laughs> around for a long time. Mark's not going anywhere, folks. Mark's sticking with oh, us. Don't I'll be worry around. about that. Uh, so you'll always be around. Um, is Venditti going to Ghost Machine? Uh, I don't know. I don't really follow any of the writers outside of what they're doing on the Superman side of things. So, uh can't answer that one for you, JP. But one I wanted to put to you, Mark, was what the heck happened to the last days of Lex Luthor? Um, I don't know. It came out months and months and months ago, and it hasn't been heard from since. I yeah, mean, you know, we've again, been scheduling you, the review for like we've got a little calendar that we have for our uh, team of reviewers, and every week. That I, you know, every beginning of every month when I schedule the who's doing what review, uh, the next issue of the last days of Lex Luthor just gets pushed to the following month because it's been it was originally scheduled for like I think late last year and then uh, I've just kept pushing it to January, to February, to March, to April. Now it's I've pushed it to June because I can't see it scheduled for any time soon. The next issue. I, I don't know, and of course, when you when you look, you you know, or read about it, you hear different things. Oh, the art, you know, the writing. This team is busy. That one's busy, and it's like, well, you know, if, if that's the case, then when you schedule these things, when you start these things, I mean, shouldn't you know? You know, you have this time to to put this book out, and I mean, I understand things happen. Yeah, you know, but when they, a lot of times when they say, oh, we're still working on the art. I'm like, well, you knew about this for so long. I mean, I understand if you're doing other projects and things pop up, I understand that. But it, it's just, you know, uh, I mean, we could say, hey, look, things happen, but sometimes there's just no excuse for certain things. I mean, what? I mean, unless it's some big major reason, I mean, why is there such a big delay? Why is the art taking longer? Why is the story taking longer? I just, I, I don't understand. 
And that's the thing. This is supposed to have been a three-issue miniseries. And I'm just going to bring up the... I'll turn off the one in the background there. So that was the cover for the first issue, book one. And it's supposed to be a three-book um, miniseries. And the first issue came out in September 2023. I can't even remember what happened in the book this far back. No, I can't back now. And issue two, it's, it's, there's still no, it hasn't been scheduled. If it's only three issues, then wait till Mark Wade, Brian Hitch, Kevin Nolan, etc., have actually finalized, finished writing, drawing, inking, coloring, printing the three books, and then issue them. Don't give us one issue. And then, exactly. And then we wait maybe till another six months before we get the next. It just does not make sense from a publishing point of view. I don't get, if you don't have the second book, don't put out the first book. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that either because that, this happens all the time, you know? And you wonder, well, I mean, you know, if you, especially if it's a mini series and you know it's only going to be so many, finish the book, do the book, and then when the book is done, Publish. then then put put it out. Why, you know, why just do it one book and then say, oh yeah, well if the second one's going to be late. Well, well, why shouldn't you have done it already? I mean, shouldn't you have finished the book? Yeah, I mean, you I get don't paid know. to do it. So I, I can't. I, I it's, yeah, it's that's crazy, mind boggling. But nevertheless, uh, we wait for that one whenever it comes out. We might have to revisit the first issue to remind ourselves of what's yeah. going on with the second. Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of tonight's show. I want to thank everyone who tuned in. Uh, a lot of live listeners, uh, watchers, uh, viewers uh, with us tonight. So we appreciate your company over this past hour. Thank you for being part of the show. Thank you to those in the comments. JP, Mind the Gap, Butson, Steve, Piper, um, uh, people on Facebook as well who we didn't get to see their names, Chance, Nostalgic Pod Blast, My Flack, uh, and so many others. Thank you for your participation in making this show a lively discussion while we're doing the show. Uh, thank you to you, my co-host, Mark Lax. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Steve. Always a pleasure. Sorry, I'm a little that yeah, far. Yeah, okay. don't, <laughs> just don't crowd my space. Uh, uh -oh. Also... oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, geez. Uh, Mark and I will be back next week on Monday, April 8th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. I want to remind our fans and friends in the Southern Hemisphere like myself, uh, because of daylight savings uh, uh, ending here in, in Australia and other places in the Southern Hemisphere, the show will come an hour earlier in the day for us. It will still be at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time for our friends in the U.S. Nothing changes there, but fans in the Southern Hemisphere – who go out of daylight saving, it will come an hour earlier. So if you're in Sydney like me in Australia, it'll be at 12.30 p.m. on Tuesday. But for everybody else, just you need to know Monday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific time uh, is the show next week on Monday, April 8th. Uh, so Mark and I'll be back at that time for another edition of Superman Homepage Live. We hope you'll join us then. Thank you to our sponsors and our patrons, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, Tina Murray and C. Ralph Adler. We appreciate your support. My name is Steve Eunice. Thanks for watching Superman Homepage Live. Be sure to check out supermanhomepage.com for all your daily news updates on everything surrounding the Man of Steel. Good night.